Welcome into this edition of the Vinyl Voyage. I am your host, Keegan Matheson, and today we are talking about Record Store Day, which is a fantastic occurrence that happens every April, but not this year, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, so, Record Store Day is basically supposed to help out indie and, and privately owned record stores. And they give you exclusive pressings of usually demos or B-sides or records that have a wide release, but on color variations on records. But it's always limited to a certain number. Um, usually, they have releases that are numbered. And on the back, you'll see a little number. Like this one here has a 5485. Um, but basically, it's just supposed to be a smaller press counting, so they're more collectible. So people actually go out to their local record store and support the local record store. Um, usually it happens around the third Saturday of every April, but this year, since coronavirus happened, we have had to deal with changes. And Record Store Day is doing this thing called Record Store Day Drops, which that means that they have spread out the list of releases into three separate release dates. So this past Saturday we had our first record store day. It was August 29th. Then the next one is September 26th. And the last one is October 24th. So th the whole list will be spread out uh, through three different days. So nobody, no one day is having all these people come at the one time. So I guess it's supposed to uh, lower the amount of people that show up each time, but it'll actually have three different occurrences of Record Store Day, which is pretty cool. I think it's a nice pivot away from the normal because, I mean, we're having to deal with a new world and it's a little bit different and we want people to be socially distant and do things the right way. So hopefully this will help out indie record stores and they won't go out of business because it's a fantastic thing that we have in our community. We have a great amount of uh, indie record stores in our community. We have J&B Vana, we have Dead Wax Records. I mean, I just say, go out, support that, support those record stores. And of course, Marvin's One Stop Record Shop, which is right up here in the corner. Can't, can't forget that. Um, uh, I don't think he does record store day, but you know, I think that's very cool to any sort of record place that you can find around here that you can buy locally and support them in this time of need. That would be amazing. Always wear masks, of course, but it's always good to support the local record stores. But today, I have 10 full-length LPs in my collection that are Record Store Day releases, so I wanted to talk about those a little bit. So let's get into that. Uh, my first one here is Elvis Presley, King of the Ring. This is a nice red vinyl pressing. Got my mobile fidelity sleeves here. Um, pretty limited, I'd have to say. Uh, this one is number 478 in the co bottom corner there. I don't know if you could see that, but it is numbered. Nice gatefold here. And that's what Record Store Day is all about, is having a wide release, but usually having some sort of variation, because this came on a red vinyl, and it's supposed to be limited and numbered, which is different than the mass release. And th this is a pretty cool album. It's uh, all pretty much acoustic with this little little band here uh, with, of course, the man, the legend, Elvis Presley. And this is the only Elvis record in my collection, so I had to have a pretty good one. And this one has all of it. That's All Right, Heartbreak Hotel, uh, Blue Suede Shoes. I mean, if you think of Elvis, it's, it's on here. Even Blue Christmas is on here. So... Uh, Elvis, the king in the ring. It's pretty cool. All right. Next record is also a variation record. It had a wide release on black vinyl, but on Record Store Day, they did a red vinyl release. This is Metallica's most recent full-length studio album. And this is, of course, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, 2016's thrash metal album. I'd say that they're the, the biggest metal band of all time, uh, not only in the genre of thrash metal, but in the genre of metal, I'd have to say. Metallica is pretty much uh, 
pretty much the band in metal. And this is a nice red pressing of Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Great songs on here. Uh, Atlas Rise is probably my favorite on this, this particular release. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of the other songs that I really like on this record. Here comes Revenge. I like Here Comes Revenge. They got a pretty cool like dark music video to go along with that and I really like that animation on that. It's pretty interesting. But this is a this is a great release. Hardwired to self-destruct. I remember going and seeing them in Charlotte and this is the album they played. I'd say a good portion of their songs they played there. And they played on this album. But pretty good album. Record Store Day, I think, 2016, I think I said, yep. Okay, so this is this year's release. I got this last Saturday at Dead Wax Records. This is the Billie Eilish Live at Third Man Records acoustic set. This will probably not stay in my collection. This will probably go to my girlfriend because she is crazy about Billie Eilish. And a lot of people are. I mean, she's pretty much the, the hotness in music right now as far as being the, the most popular artist right now. And this is, as I said, a live acoustic release. And it's at Third Man Records, which is Jack White's uh, label. Uh, this is, I think, in the Blue Room in Nashville, Tennessee. And this was like done live to acetate. So what happens is a band goes in and they actually press the record while the band is performing which is insane, it's wonderful, and it's about as live as you can get, and it's very easy to, very easy turnaround to produce records if you're already making the, the first copy while the performance is going on, which I think that's so cool that they have a direct-to-acetate recording at Third Man Records, and this is just an interesting album. If you like albums where the audience is very involved. This is the album for you because they sing almost every single word, which I have to say, as far as Billie Eilish fans goes, they are the most into it as anybody else. My girlfriend is one of them, and she would she would die for Billie, that's for sure. <laughs> but this is Billie Eilish's uh, Live at Third Man Records, this year's release, 2020, Record Store Day. Now, on blue vinyl, by the way, I'm not probably not going to unseal it for uh, gifting purposes, but, you know, that's okay. All right, so this is uh, Bruce Springsteen's Greatest Hits. This was out of, print, out of print for the longest time, and you could only find it on black vinyl, and it was usually flimsy vinyl. It wasn't like 180 gram or thick like they do modern records. But this is his greatest hits, of course. Um, I was really wanting this record for Streets of Philadelphia, which I can't seem to find on any other album. But I, lo I love that song, and, and this one's also numbered, the top here. But this is another variation record where it's, they had a wide black vinyl release, but this one's on red vinyl, and that was exclusive to Record Store Day. So, Bruce Springsteen, greatest hits. When did this come out on Record Store Day? Ah, so this came out on Record Store Day 2018. So um, I would have still been down in Chapel Hill and going to, what was the record store in Chapel Hill? School Kids Records. Yep, that's, that's the one I got it at. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, this is also what I got at Dead Wax. Uh, I believe this is a 2016 release? Yes, 2016 release of Get Behind Me, Satan. Oh, it's it's fantastic. So what what it is? This is get me get behind me, Satan. This is the fourth, fifth, fifth studio albums of the White Stripes, uh, a fantastic duo band from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, Meg White on the drums and Jack White on the course vocals and guitar, and it's a nice gatefold. There's Jack White in the back there. Fantastic photograph. Very cool. Um, so Get Behind Me Satan never really had a wide vinyl release. They only had promo copies on vinyl when it first came out in 2004, I believe, is the release date for this, or 2005. Don't quote me on, on the release dates, I'm sorry. Um, but this, is, this was cool because Record Store Day did a release with red and white vinyl. I don't know what it is about red, but Record Store Day loves, loves to press on red, red vinyl. 
And this is, of course, a third men records release. Um, because of the aforementioned Jack White is, of course, in the white stripes. So this is their Get Behind Me Satan record with a nice lenticular cover there where you can see. I don't know if you're really seeing any variation there, but it's pretty cool. All right, moving on. Uh, I've already talked about this one. Uh, last time we were on, we talked about Otis Redding. And this is Otis Redding at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. Uh, this is also on red vinyl. What's the deal with the red vinyl? Uh, but this was such a inspiring performance that I felt like I needed it on vinyl. And it was so important to Otis Redding's career as far as getting mass appeal at a pop festival. Because he was kind of a, you know, underground, I mean, Georgia-based act. And he was doing clubs. But this really gave him the audience that he deserved, Otis Redding, live at the Monterey Pop Festival. Very cool with Booker T and the MGs, of course. Also, uh, I believe this is a 2019 release, so I got this last year at Record Store Day. Very cool album. All right, moving on, another 2019 Record Store Day release. This is Bob Dylan, Blood on the Tracks, Tess pressing, uh, I believe it's just kind of a mock-up of the original test pressing for Blood on the Tracks in 1974 when they actually first came out with the record. It's in this, this generic kind of cardboard sleeve on black vinyl, of course. And it's, it basically is an alternate version of Blood on the Tracks, which is a very classic Bob Dylan album. Um, it's available for the first time ever as a wide release. And that's what Record Store Day is all about, giving you the weird oddities and test pressings and demos and stuff that you never really heard. But this, uh, you hear the songs in a very different way on this release as far as the mass release, you know, with... Um, I'll show you the cover here on that usual blow, blow on the Tracks with him on the cover release. Uh, this is kind of moody almost and kind of dark, and it's very interesting to hear him uh, or these established recordings be in a different light, and that's what Record Store Day is all about. And this is Blood on the Tracks, last year's release by Bob Dylan. This one's kind of a cheat because it is not on Record Store Day, the one in April. They also have a Record Store Day Black Friday which that usually happens in November, of course, which when Black Friday happens, where they get some smaller releases and they put them out to uh, record shops all around the nation and the country and the world. I think, I think Record Store Day is worldwide as far as the UK and America, and they try to really branch out on this, but this is a Record Store 2019 Black Friday release. This is Pearl Jam. MTV Unplugged, when I think of Pearl Jam and I think of the 90s, you have to think MTV Unplugged. I mean, because I mean, Nirvana, uh, even Bruce Springsteen did MTV Unplugged. And it's, Alice in Chains, of course, did a fantastic MTV Unplugged. But I love this Pearl Jam record uh, on MTV Unplugged. Oceans is probably my favorite song by Pearl Jam, and they do a fantastic rendition of it here. I love the bass part. Uh, and Eddie's voice is, is just peak, peak him at this point in their career. Uh, I've always liked Pearl Jam, and this is, this is probably my favorite, favorite album from them, I have to be honest. Uh, and I'm so glad that they pressed this officially on vinyl, because it didn't exist officially on vinyl until they pressed it for Record Store Day 2019, which that is what Record Store Day is all about, is getting new releases that actually mean something to people. And this, this definitely means something to me, which... Pearl Jam, MTV Unplugged, I don't think you can beat it. For 90s grunge, it's the way to go. Alright, so this is the first Record Store Day album I ever bought. This is in 2015. Johnny Cash, um, of course, his hot blue guitar. And it is fittingly on this blue vinyl. The sound of this record is insane. It sounds so good. Usually they say black vinyl has a, a 
better audio file quality. But this sounds better than anything I've ever listened to. It's very nice. Uh, 3,000 copies, I believe, uh, worldwide. So it's also numbered at the bottom here. I think it's copy number 20, 2566. But I also bought this at Dead Wax Records here in Lenore uh, back when he was downstairs and not upstairs. Uh, but this, this is a really great album. Of course, it has uh, Cry, 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 Folsom Prison Blues. Uh, I'll Walk the Line even is on this, this album. And it's, it's a huge album for Johnny Crash's career. And I felt like it needed to have special commemoration in my collection. So I got the Record Store Day Blue variant. And, of course, that is what Record Store Day is about as far as getting nice monumental records on a nice color vinyl or in a unique way. All right, you've already seen this one multiple times. It's Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison, the box set. This is one of my favorite releases of all time, and it came out on Record Store Day. And I believe this was 2018's box set release for Record Store Day. But this... This is just the behemoth of a collection. It's numbered on the top here, 588. It was like 70 some bucks retail. But I mean, we, we have all the songs that you would want on here for Johnny Cash and that falls in prison, which is just a legendary album. Um, I mean, it's not even just Johnny Cash. It has some Carl Perkins on here, the Statler Brothers on here. Um, so it, it's everything you would want from that performance at Folsom Prison. And this album came out in 1969, I believe. So I don't think you can really beat this as far as country albums go. It's... Oh, actually, it came out in 68. Excuse me. One, one year off. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, but but th this, this is the best country album of all time, and I feel like it has to be on the best Record Store Day releases just because I wanted to hear the whole tapes. I wanted to hear John Henry's Hammer and it actually be on the, the vinyl release because we didn't really get that for the regular basic like one LP set. You didn't really get that. So Johnny Cash, Live at Folsom Prison, probably my favorite Record Store Day release. What's your favorite Record Store Day release? Do you, do you have a favorite? Is there one you can't track down? I can't seem to track down uh, Billy Joel, Live at Carnegie Hall. I wanted to hear that one. I can't seem to track that one down. That's a Record Store Day release. Uh, I mean, there's always some that get away and they never come to that, that record store. Or, or either he ordered it and they didn't give it to him or, or somebody beat you to the punch. It's just, just the thing about Record Store Day is it's a one day and one time only kind of thing. So I really like how they do it and I wish that they, I like that they, they have a lot of records for for these indie record stores but I prefer if the pressing numbers were down just a little bit like everybody else with collector items you want them to be lower and not quite 3,000 or, or bigger releases like you know 1,500 2,000 like that's that's going to bring scarcity to the record of course it all matters about who who actually performed it and who what the band is and how collectible the band is. Like if it's the Beatles, we're not going to see a release for you know three thousand. It's going to be a wide release of seventeen thousand, and it's still going to sell out probably just because of the popularity of the band. Like the Billie Eilish record I just showed you, seventeen thousand of those were pressed, but it'll still be sought after because that's just how it works. When you, when some people are fans of it and crazy about it, they're they're going to drive up the price, but. Record Store Day is a great thing. I'm so happy it happens every year. And we get three of them this year in 2020. So uh, look at your local record stores on uh, October 24th, September 26th for the last two Record Store Days of the year. And hopefully you find something good. And thank you so much for watching this edition of The Vinyl Voyage. I'm Keegan Matheson. I'll see you later.